Hi everyone, this is Adam Virgil, and in this video we're going to get stock prices for all of these S&P 500 stocks. And we got these stocks from Wikipedia, and we're automatically bringing in the S&P 500 stocks based on whatever's in this Wikipedia website. If you want to learn how to get data from a website, go to my video on that that is also in this series. Now. We can use a function called Google Finance that does a lot of really cool things. So let's just type in here, equals Google Finance. What it needs is a ticker, and we have all of our tickers, or our symbols, right here to use. And then we need to give it an attribute. In other words, do we want the price or something else about that symbol or that ticker? And then we can specify start date and end dates and even an interval. These are all optional, including the attribute. All we really need is a ticker. And we have all of our tickers right here. So let's select this ticker and close the parentheses and click enter. Well, look at that, we have something. The default is price, so this is probably the current price for that symbol. And if we wanted to make this something that's interactive, let's say, let's say that we wanted to pick what we wanted to know about this stock. What we could do, let's look at Google Finance again. Google Finance. And let's learn a little bit more about this. And we can see that ticker, mandatory. And if we scroll down, attributes. Here are all the attributes. We get, we're going to get the price, the price open, the high, low, volume, market cap, all these things. And what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to pick these things and see them about the stock that I'm interested in. So to do that, we can just create a list of these things. So let's um, let's create that list. We got price, price open, high, low. I kind of want to keep this learn more here. And I'm not really sure how to avoid this. Here, yeah, let's go over here and let's make a list. So let's say price, price open. High, low, volume, market cap, trade time, data delay, and then that might be it. Do we have any volume average? Oh my God, there's so many volume average. Can you tell I don't I don't really do that much stuff in the finance space. EPS, high 52, low 52, change beta. Oh my gosh, change PCT. Close YESD, shares, currency, and clearly, like it says, what each of these things are. Um, I'm not going to go over those things, nor do I really know what a lot of these things are. But what we can do here is let's X out of this. We have a list of all these attributes that we could use. What we can do is in this formula equals Google Finance A2, which is the ticker that we're interested in. For the attribute, let's just select whatever is in this cell right here, that cell, and let's close it off and click enter. Right now we have an error, but we can create a drop down list of all of these items. To do that, we can go to data, data validation, list from a range, and let's reject input because if we don't pick an item from the list, we don't want to get an error. And let's select all of our items. And we can select all these and maybe a couple more for good measure. These are all the items that will go in the list. And we'll click OK, Save. And now let's select something from this list. Let's select Price. Now we have the price. And let's select Volume. Now we have the volume. Or maybe we want the high 52. And now we have that. So what we can do is let's lock in this a this a here and let's lock in the one here the reason being is because i'm going to copy these formulas and paste them over one so let's do that and we'll copy these two things and paste them right here and now we're looking at the same ticker but a different metric we're looking at the metric in l1 and we can select something else. So let's say it's the, the price, right? 
So that's for this ticker. Now, if we want them for all the tickers, we can copy both of these formulas. And I'm just going to scroll to the bottom here. It should be about 500, and there are. And we paste the formulas in. Now we have all of this data. We have all of this data, finance data, for each of these tickers. ACN, that's its high 52, and that's its price. Currently, I, I believe. I'm, again, I'm not, not sure. But this is a... That's how you can use Google Finance with stuff from the web, stuff that you get from the web to give you insights. And one other thing that I want to go over is we can use these start and end dates too in Google Finance if we'd like to. Let's pretend like, let's actually generate a list of tickers now. So this is our, our overview of all of them, but maybe we're interested in one. So let's, let's create another drop down list here. Go data, data validation, and we'll reject the input if it's not there. And I want to get a list of tickers. So let's select this one, A2, colon A, which just means that it goes to the bottom of the spreadsheet. So we'll get a list of all the tickers from A2 all the way down to the bottom of column A. Click OK, save. And now if we go over here, we should have a drop down list of all of our tickers. OK, great. I'm just going to highlight these so that we know that they're special. This is special too. We'll select one. And let's use that Google Finance function again. Go equals Google Finance. Let's select the ticker, which is this one, comma, the attribute. Well, maybe we need to do maybe we need to do something else here. We need to add an an attribute here that we can select also. So I copied and pasted this list over here. We go equals Google Finance. Here's the ticker, comma. Here's the attribute, comma. Now start date. We have a lot of options here. Why don't we pick a start date and an end date? Sure, we could do that. So let's scroll over even more here. And let's just select a U1, comma, as a start date, and W1 as the end date. And then we can, if we want an interval, let's just say it's daily, that'll be the default, and we'll close off this parenthesis and click enter. Now we don't have a start date or an end date, but if we type one in, let's say the end date is, or the start date is 11-2020, and the end date is 3-18-2021, and let's just select these two things and highlight them so we know that they're special. Now we have every single day of this stock price for MMM. If we change it to the, what the heck, the low, now we have the low for every day for this, for this stock ticker, and we can maybe change, choose a different one. Let's check in on Google and see how it's doing. And if we wanted to briefly summarize this information, I'm just going to create a big, I'm just going to create a big box here. Create a big box. We're going to use something called a spark line. And we're not going to get into the details of what a spark line is, but it essentially it's a mini chart. And go equals spark line, open parenthesis. The first thing that it needs is the data. And our data, let's say we're going R3 colon to R, so all the way to the bottom, which will be flexible for depending on the number of days that we pick for our dates. So we want a spark line of all that data comma and now we need to tell google sheets what type of chart we want we start with an open curly bracket and then quote chart type just like we have here it shows us kind of what to do but instead of a bar we're going to do a line so let's end quote for chart type comma now we say what type of chart we want so quote line end quote and that's all we're going to do for now so let's close the open curly bracket, close the parenthesis, and click enter. And this is a snapshot of Google's low over time. And if we select MMM, that is a snapshot of MMM over time between these two dates. Maybe we just want to look at uh, six months. So we go 1-1-2020 to, um, let's say, 7 
1, 20, 20. And we can look at a snapshot in a different range. So hopefully this video is helpful for showing you how to get data from the internet and consolidate it to a certain extent and display it. Uh, and we also got an intro into Google Finance, which I didn't really know too much about before, and that's pretty cool. So again, I hope this video is helpful, and please let me know if you have any questions. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate your support, and I'll see you in another video.